I remember recognizing some years ago that for many years I had just been addicted to achievement for the sake of achieving because achievement is how I earned love as a kid. And so my life revolved around bigger and better and bolder. And how do I keep going and going and going? Not even because I deeply desire to do something, but because I knew doing it would garner a certain level of respect or applause or adoration from one place or another. Hey there, welcome back to the Redefining Wealth podcast with Patrice Washington. This is the space that you come to each and every week to learn more about what it means to chase purpose in your life, not money. Uh, And this is a community of purpose chasers from all over the world who have redefined wealth for themselves because we understand that wealth is so much more than just money and material possessions. The original 12th century definition of wealth is the condition of well-being and happiness. And so it's important to be well in all the parts of your life that impact your finances, even when you're not thinking about it. That is what the six pillars of wealth is all about. It's the framework that we use here at Redefining Wealth. And if you are unfamiliar or if you haven't stopped to just go take the quiz and figure out which pillar really needs your attention in this season, I want to invite you to go to patricewashington.com, click on start here, and you can take a really quick Redefining Wealth quiz. It's only going to take you two minutes, and it'll help you identify the pillar that needs your attention so you can get to work on being well and building wealth. Really excited about today's episode because it was inspired by a client, and client conversations are always the best conversations because it gives me insight into what more of you at home are probably thinking about and struggling with. And today I want to speak to that, which is the topic of unfulfillment. But before I jump into everything with this episode, here is the affirmation of the week. I lead a remarkably fulfilled life. I am the architect of my own fulfilled life, weaving purpose and joy into every moment. With gratitude, I acknowledge the abundance that surrounds me, and I appreciate the beauty in both small and grand experiences. Each day, I take deliberate steps towards my goals, guiding my passions and aspirations. Through nurturing relationships, self-care, and meaningful pursuits, I cultivate a life rich with contentment and happiness. As I lead a fulfilled life, I inspire others to embark on their own journey of fulfillment and purpose. Declare with me today, I lead a remarkably fulfilled life. All right, I hope you enjoyed that affirmation. Now listen, I was having a client conversation just a few days ago, and it shocked me that she even asked me this question. And it was, why do you always say live your life's purpose and find fulfillment is a key to earning more? And I thought that we had covered this, guys, but I know that there are so many new purpose chasers from all over the world stepping into redefining wealth. And so I'm really excited um, to visit for, for some of you for the first time these concepts and revisit for those of you who are OGs and need a little refresher. Now, I have been saying this for years. Back in the day when I was a financial management consultant, I was really basically a financial counselor at a nonprofit in Atlanta and working with so many one-on-one clients for that year and a half or so, what I would tell my peers, what I would say around the office is, I really don't think so-and-so has a problem with their finances, but I think that they're unfulfilled. And because they're unfulfilled at work, because they're not operating in purpose, um, because they're not using their gifts on a daily basis, that frustration is creating a void. And whenever there is a void present, our mind, our body, our spirit is going to try to fill it with whatever it can because it doesn't like the void. And this materializes as unfulfillment for many people. Um, And it, it really, the thing about unfulfillment is it stirs up so many emotions. There's the frustration, there's the disappointment, 
Um, some of us experience this as sadness on a day-to-day basis, and we can't always put our finger on it. But what it does is it makes you question your choices, your goals, and the path that you're on. For many years, um, I was doing the Creative for Purpose Challenge, and I would always share with people, you are created on purpose, for purpose, with purpose, and obviously I want y'all to pursue purpose more than you uh, chase money because purpose is the thing that really fulfills you and sustains you. But I would say that all the time, and I had this other line I would say, which is when you're not in alignment with what you're authentically called to do, And when you're not putting yourself in spaces that are aligned with who you really are and what you're called to do, it will make you question your God-given gifts. It will make you question the path. So many of us dismiss and diminish our gifts because we're using them in the wrong place or the wrong ministry or with the wrong people. And how that materializes is the unfulfillment. It's this constant sense that something's not right and I should be somewhere else, and I should be doing something else. And then when you couple that with the idea that many of us, you know, were raised with, which is this idea that, well, I should just be grateful. So now you're trying to force yourself to be grateful for a lot of great stuff, but it's not aligned stuff, right? And it just creates this back and forth. And I wanted to speak to it and talk about how to know if you're unfulfilled because, If you don't recognize that's what's going on, you'll continue to chase external um, validation. You'll continue to chase meaningless titles, uh, meaningless rewards, whether that be the car, the house, the this. And let me say again, I'm all for having nice things. I want everyone to have abundance in their financial resources, but I want you to have what truly aligns with you for you. And that's why you are redefining wealth for yourself, right? So I wanted to share the signs so that you could be more aware and come into an awakening if there is something that you need to recognize and recondition in your life. And I came up with three ways to know if you're unfulfilled. Here's the first one. The first one is external achievements don't bring lasting joy or contentment the way that you thought it would. Many of us have set hearty goals for ourselves, whether that's aspiring to get to the C-suite or to have a certain position in your company or to live in a certain neighborhood, to drive a certain car, to do certain things. And you are like, this is the thing. I know that when I get this, all of a sudden I'm going to be happy. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to be fulfilled. And then... It happens, and it's like on to the next thing, on to the next thing. That doesn't fill the void. It doesn't last as long as you thought it would. It doesn't give you the joy that you thought it would. It's just another thing to check off the list, right? I remember recognizing some years ago that for many years I had just been addicted to achievement for the sake of achieving, Because achievement is how I earned love as a kid. And so my life revolved around bigger and better and bolder. And how do I keep going and going and going? Not even because I deeply desire to do something, but because I knew doing it would garner a certain level of respect or applause or adoration from one place or another. And it has been so empowering to just kind of strip that away and know that anything that I pursue, I am genuinely doing it because it feels right in my soul, even if it doesn't make sense to another soul. And that, you know, has been freeing for me. But when you're looking for the external achievements to bring that joy you're not even willing to say yes or no to the things that truly align with you. It's just for the sake of getting the achievement, right? Here's the second way you know if you're unfulfilled. It's just this constant nagging that something feels missing. You can't quite put your finger on it. You don't know how to explain it to people, but you wake up every day with this sense of, 
I should be doing more or I should be working with them or I should be living in this place. I should be. You have a lot of shoulds in your vocabulary and something feels missing. That's why the theme of Redefining Wealth Live this year is meant for more because I know what that feels like to know that I'm doing good work, but I want to do God work. Like I'm doing good things, but I want to do great things. And I know people are applauding me for this, but authentically, I don't feel aligned with this. There is just this constant feeling that something is missing and it's nagging. And let me tell you, it doesn't go away because you want to wish it away or pray it away. It starts to go away and melt away when you start to be radically honest about what you truly desire. When you stop policing your dreams, when you don't allow yourself to become a prisoner to something that you said years ago, and now you and other people are trying to hold you hostage to that. If you constantly feel like there is more for you, then there is more for you. We live in an abundant universe where there is always more available to you. And one of the lessons that I learned recently, and something is like a mantra I've been telling myself, Patrice, there is always better available to you. There is nothing in this world I have to settle for. If there's a grocery store in my area that I don't really like going to because the the customer service is bad. There is always another store somewhere up the street. Now, if you live in a food desert, this is not for you. Use another example, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's just this persistent sense of dissatisfaction or emptiness, and you can't shake it off. And what I imagine it to be is like, you have done the work to put the puzzle of your life together. There are so many pieces. Think of all the pillars that you've been working on since you were a child, but really as an adult, you've been working and putting all these puzzle pieces together and you know that there is a beautiful picture at the end. You have a vision for this. It looks like the picture on the box if anyone else is in the puzzles, right? You have the whole picture on the box and that's what you're following. And somehow there's one piece missing. It doesn't matter how beautiful all these other pieces are and how they've come together. If one piece is missing, the picture is still incomplete. If there is a piece missing in your life because you've done all of the things and you have the family and, and the, you know, the jewelry and the material things, and you have the great corporate career and you have this and you have that, but yet what you truly desire is love. And you're not finding that romantic love, even in the midst of what your family dynamics are right now. What does it matter to have all the pieces Um, that are surrounding it, if that piece is still missing, this picture is not complete. And we've been taught, again, to just be grateful for what I have, and I'm not dismissing gratitude. I write things that I'm grateful for every day. I'm big on gratitude. I've kept gratitude journals for so many years before it was a popular thing. But you can be grateful for what you have and still desire more. You can be grateful for the pieces of the puzzle that you have figured out and put into place. And yet, if there is a piece missing, your soul is still yearning, desiring, thirsty, hungry to find that piece and put it in. And that unfulfillment is creating chaos in your life. Even if the picture looks good from a distance, you know what you feel on the inside and you have to be willing to honor that because whether you want to acknowledge it or not, it is impacting so many other parts of your life. It's impacting how you show up in other parts of your life. That frustration, that sadness, that moodiness, that trying to cope with things. And that leads me to the next one. Another way that you know that you're unfulfilled is you're trying to cope by buying people or buying things. That void that is created when we're not operating in purpose and we're not saying what we really need to say and doing what we really need to do, it creates a void that is so large that most people only know to find a way to cope, right, by many people addiction and then many of us buying people Meaning we may make it sound good like, oh, I'm just a giver. No, you're trying to buy love. (laughs) 
You're trying to buy respect. You want to buy control. And so you have a tendency to step in all the time and be people's saviors. This is why I used to tell people, you don't have a budgeting problem. You have a people problem. You have a work problem that's led to a people problem that is now a money problem. You're unfulfilled at work. So you're trying to look for fulfillment. So you want to buy people, buy their love, their attention, their affection. So you step in and you're constantly their savior. Your boundaries are non-existent. You've added them to your budget unknowingly. And now you want to come into a space with a financial professional and say, I just need to know what budgeting app to use. No, ma'am. No, sir. That's not what that is. (laughs) You have some other things that we need to work through. So unfulfillment manifests itself as trying to fill the void. Many times buying things you already own. If you have to keep going shopping and buying a different variation of the same shoe or, oh, I just need a little pair of black shoes and you have 19 pairs already, ma'am, this is not, no. And when you're not aware of it, when you don't recognize it, you can't recondition it. And it becomes a really nasty cycle that goes on and on. I remember how emotional I used to be going to uh, my one of my first jobs. I think I was still in college or coming out of college, but I was in real estate back then. Many of you know I used to be a real estate and mortgage broker, became one at 21 years old. And driving to work to go work with a family member at the time who owned a real estate company who taught me the game. And while I was very grateful, and I'm grateful to this day for what she taught me, the environment was not in alignment with who I truly am. And I hated going there. So much so that as I was driving down the 405 freeway, I would be fine. And then when I would get two exits away, I would start to feel like a tightness in my chest. And then when I was one exit away, my eyes would start to well up. And by the time I got to the office, I would be in full-blown tears. I can't tell you the number of times that I had to call my mom in the morning and ask her to pray for me because I knew the environment I was walking into. And then when I felt like I was wearing my mom out and my grandmother out at the time were praying for me, I started going to the liquor store down the street. And they, they, those are the people who taught me about Bailey's and coffee. <laughs> Bailey's Irish cream and coffee or Kahlua and coffee. Had never heard of it, learned about it. And I would go in the morning to get a coffee and they would give me the little shots or pints or whatever that you just throw in there. I don't know if that's the right term, but you know, the little liquor bottles. You just pour it in there. And probably after a few months of this, When I walked in one day and they already had it ready for me, I was like, (laughs) ma'am, this has gone too far. This is not even who you are. Now you're operating out of your character because you're keeping yourself in an environment that is out of alignment with who you are and what your spirit is telling you. And I ended up having to leave that environment as difficult as it was and it impacted my family for years Right. But I had to do what was right for me. And I share that to say that, you know, for me in that season, coping was stopping at the liquor store. I was over 21. It was legal. But everything that is permissible is not beneficial. Just because I could doesn't mean that it was the best thing for me to be doing. And you think about that for you. What are some of the things that you are normalizing just to cope? just to cope with the unfulfillment that you are experiencing because you are not in the right place using your gifts, operating in your purpose, knowing that you are meant for more, that there is something different that God has for your life and you are settling for being in a place that does not serve you. So these are some of the ways that you may recognize unfulfillment in your life. I'm not going to just give you the information and leave you there, though. I want to leave you with some things that you can do to counter this, to start to work through this. So one of the first things I really want to encourage you to do, when we talk about the work pillar, remember we're talking about living your life's purpose. And the way to really lean into your purpose is to understand what your gifts are and operate in them. Your purpose is how your gifts create impact in the marketplace. And that doesn't mean you have to be an entrepreneur. 
But it's one thing to have passion because that's for you. But purpose is how do you take these things that God gave you freely and use them in a way that other people can be blessed, right? When you are operating in your gifts, fulfillment is on the other side of that. You don't have to go shop and do all the things. If you like nice things, I'm not mad at that. I like nice things. But why are you buying the nice things? Is it to fill a void or is it to give you joy? Two different things here, right? Um, Is it to give you joy or are you just trying to fill a void? These are two different motivations. That's the word I was looking for. So making sure that you're operating in your gifts. What did God give you freely? What is the thing that lights you up that you could do all day and look up and go, oh, my gosh, I haven't eaten. I haven't. Now, I don't suggest this, but I'm saying you are so into this thing that you are doing. I could do on camera work all day. It is a part of my gifting. I don't typically need 56 takes. Like, this is a part of my gifting. I could do it all day. When I do satellite media tours, I do 30 interviews back-to-back from 5 or 6 a.m., and I just get patched in to uh, television stations all over the country, and I have the same level of enthusiasm on interview 1, interview 5, interview 10, interview 20, 25, and 30 because I'm operating in my gift. I don't have to force that. I don't have to push. I don't have to manipulate. It's my gift. Talking is the thing that I got in trouble for all while in school, all while in school, started in kindergarten. But me speaking is a part of how I bless others and bless myself. Now I get paid to talk, right, on television, on a stage, on radio, on a podcast. This is nothing that someone, now have I had to cultivate the skills? Have I had media training and all the things? Absolutely. But it was always a part of my gifting. Leaning into it and embracing it is what has led to such fulfillment in my life. Because when I see how it impacts other people, that's where that fulfillment comes from. It's not from buying stuff. Right. And, and it's not from coping by drinking or doing any other number of things that people do to cope. So operating in your gifts, if that confuses you or stresses you out. I am re-releasing something that I did for many years. Again, the purpose challenge. And it's at the purpose challenge dot com. It will take you through five kind of steps. Just follow through so that you can refine what your gifts are and how you may be able to use them purposefully in the marketplace. It's totally free. Go to the purposechallenge.com and click the notes in or click the link, excuse me, in the show notes. And I pray that that supports you. The second thing, get in alignment with your core values. What really matters to you? What is one of the core values that drive you or what are all of the core values that drive you? I speak about this in the book, Redefine Wealth for Yourself, how to really get in tune with what matters to you so that you can set your life up around that. So integrity matters to me. Authenticity matters to me. Relatability, connection matters to me. Like I try to align my life and my business and my relationships and all the things that I experience and I do, how I interact with my clients based on my core values. The more that I can express my core values in my daily life, the more fulfilling it is. When For me, authenticity, when I don't have to pretend, perform, or try to protect an image and all this stuff, when I can say to my clients, I'm not perfect, y'all. I'm making sloppy progress. I am spirit-led. I am going as I feel like God leads me. When I can openly talk about my faith, which is why I switched my platform to be able to embrace that about six or seven years ago now, that has allowed me to become more and more fulfilled, right? Which leads to me being able to operate in my purpose more effortlessly. And another one that's a really practical one, anyone can do today. You can do this today. Identify your ideal day. From the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep, what does your day look like? I have clients do this all the time. We are so quick to talk about what we don't want, but we don't even know what we do want. 
I am so grateful that I can say sincerely today that the way that I live my life today is what I journaled years ago. What I journaled years ago, I used to have a line in my ideal day about wanting to go work out. No, first of all, wanting to wake up, pray, meditate, and journal that I wanted to go work out by a certain time, take my daughter to school, um, come back and start my day with a nice cup of coffee or a protein shake, what time I would start working, which for me is 10 a.m., and then the types of people that I would work with, what the energy and the vibe was of the space I would work with. Something that I said that was a, a real line that I live today is that I walked down to my home office with fuzzy slippers on, and that was my reality for like seven, eight years. Now I don't have to walk downstairs. I walk down the hall to my office in my new place, um, and I'm still in my fuzzy slippers. What does it look like for you? Define your ideal day so that as you start to live that and as you get more intentional about creating that for yourself, again, the fulfillment. So when I'm saying live your life's purpose and find fulfillment, the more you tap into the gifts and the purpose and answer the call on your life and you set up your life to support you, you, you start to create moments of that ideal day wherever you can because it doesn't all happen at once, but now you know what it is so you can find the things that you can do today, the more the fulfillment comes. And as that happens, you don't have the back and forth uh, that comes with unfulfillment, that straddling the fence, um, talking yourself in and talking yourself out, the comparing yourself to everyone else, right? Looking to the left and the right instead of looking in the mirror and within and accepting that you are exactly where, where you're supposed to be at this particular time in your life. Like God has not made any mistakes on you and God has not forgotten you, but you have a responsibility to give God something to bless and co-create this, right? Along with whatever source, divine source you believe in. I promise you when you start to do the work, that fulfillment will still start to rise. And when the fulfillment rises, how you interact with your finances will continue to improve. It will continue to improve. And this doesn't have to be a long, super drawn out thing. A lot of this are practices that I've had in place for years and they continue to evolve how I work with them and how I experience a lot of this kind of shifts and evolves as I work with my clients in Mastery Momentum or one of the programs. But I just want you to know that that feeling of unfulfillment is a universal human experience. Uh, many people go through this like in different seasons of their life. Um, and that's normal. But sitting in it long term doesn't have to be your thing. You don't have to just carry the burden of this feeling of unfulfillment forever. You can start to do some of these things. Take the purpose challenge. The link will be in the show notes. Craft your ideal day. Craft a list of your core values and think about how you're actually living them out in your everyday life. And let me know if you start to see a shift because I would absolutely love that for you. Um, and I just hope this blesses you. So thank you to the client. You know who you are who asked me about why I always talk about unfulfillment. Um, I really, really do hope that this blesses you. You can hit me up in social media at Seek Wisdom PCW and tell me your thoughts. And don't forget to rate and review the podcast. It really, really helps us find more amazing purpose chasers like you. All right. Until next time, I'm going to say it again. I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever feeling like you have to chase money. I'll talk to you later. Yeah.